Well, welcome back to class. Uh, I hope you had a lovely lunch break. Um, we are currently three in the room. So let's wait. Can we take like five minutes break so that uh, other people will join? No problem, sir. Thank you. Thank you for warning. Thank you. <laughs> 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 okay, um, while we wait for orders, can we all hear me, please? Yes, I can. Great, great. So, uh, what about favor? I know one I mean. I can hear you, sir. Great, great. Favor to. I can see your, I can see your tumble. Okay, great. So, um, this afternoon session, uh, we are fortunate to have Ambassador Shebo Gunyogo. He came in now. I think network issue is training him out, training him out. So hopefully he'll be able to join us. But, um. We are supposed to come back by two. Some of us have been here by then. And then this is 11 minutes past. So once Ambassador Shegun comes back, we just kick start his session. Since the session will be recorded, those that come late can always watch or listen to it. So what is the purpose of the session with him? Uh, the purpose is for us to see career paths that we can build in concrete management. Uh, he has shared some experiences with us in the past, and now we have an opportunity to ask him specific questions concerning career opportunities in concrete management. Yes, the course is a foundation course for many of us, but sometimes if you're able to see where you are going, the opportunities in where you are going, it makes your journey more bearable. It gives focus to where we are going. So that is the reason we want to have this interactive session with him. Uh, being a very successful, a very, very successful uh, conflict manager, mediator to be specific, to be specific. And um, I tell people that communication is the foundation of negotiation. Communication is the foundation of negotiation and negotiation is the foundation for mediation, for mediation. In other words, you cannot be a good mediator if you don't know how to negotiate because nego uh, mediation is even called facilitated negotiation. So before you can facilitate negotiation as a mediator, you too must be grounded in the basics, in the processes, in the principles and techniques of media of negotiation. The same way, since negotiation involves communication, you've got to be a very good communicator, someone that knows how to articulate uh, his interest, his needs, his desires before you can negotiate appropriately. So, Mr. Ogunowo, Ambassador Ogunowo, has been a very, very successful mediator. So, uh, it goes without saying that he will have been a very successful or highly skilled negotiator and highly skilled uh, uh, communicator, uh, communication, an expert in communication. Like he told us yesterday, how he became, how he wrote, the communication model for the Institute of Chartered Mediators and Conciliators. So he is a man of uh, invaluable experience from which we can draw. From, uh, draw. Uh, some of our participants who are young lawyers or student lawyers may find um, wonderful opportunities 
in conflict resolution. In conflict resolution. Nowadays, people may the people in, in, include mediation clauses in their contract. And I know that uh, Ambassador Goyowo has done a lot of that in in drafting in drafting uh contracts contracts um just like a lawyer drafting contracts is one of the career opportunities in uh, in conflict management uh, we have an international instrument singapore singapore something sorry it doesn't really come to mind uh, Singapore's uh, framework is a legal framework that uh, allows international businesses to include mediation clause in their contracts. So when I draft uh, media, I mean contracts uh, for international business, I always include uh, mediation clause. I would say, in case of conflicts, the parties will start by negotiating among themselves, mediating before they can go to arbitration. There are contracts I've drafted uh, for businesses within Nigeria and outside Nigeria that don't even include litigation at all. I stop at the level of uh, arbitration, arbitration. Because a lot can be resolved if uh, business partners genuinely seek to resolve uh, their differences. A lot can be done, and it will save us a lot. Bad business image, wastage of resources, and so on and so forth. Okay, so also. I have someone, a mediator, who intervened in a business disputes. Business disputes. For instance, there was a case, he went into a case of um, a bank, a notable bank in Nigeria, that has denied one of its customers access to his money because of certain, maybe something, the account was flagged or whatever. I'm not sure it was you know, flagged, some stuff. But the guy couldn't access his money. And that has been for months. And one day this friend, this guy muted, I mean, casually, that. He's taking his bank to court because of this and that. And then that uh, mediator friend said, do you mind if I come in and help you to resolve it? And according to him, the friend gave me a go ahead, he drafted a letter to the bank. He said by the following day, no, about two or three days later, I think the following day they responded, Whereas the main customer has written severally and he did not. But when this mediator came in, wrote to the bank, they responded the following day. And within three days or so, a matter that has been hanging was resolved. And this mediator charged the bank, collected some money from the bank for, the, for his fees and something, a certain percentage. Certain percentage. So you see, when we acquire skills in conflict management, these skills can be monetized. These skills can be monetized. Yes, wonderful. We apply the skills of length of our lives to immediate family, immediate uh, people, immediate environment, our space, yes. But it's also possible to monetize, to have a career in conflict management. This same friend I just uh, told the story uh, goes into mediating conflicts of big companies. He searches out 
cases that have been in court for years. Sometimes cases between federal government and a company. I wouldn't want to mention some of these multinationals, multinational companies, big brands. This guy approaches them with his proposal, cases that have been in court for more than a decade where they have spent a lot of money. And he makes proposal to them to mediate and they give him. They give him. You know, many times when people take uh, cases to court, when it's dragging and dragging, it gets to a point that everybody gets tired. So, this is another area where we can have a career as a conflict managers. You see, it has gone, yes, blessed are the peacemakers. The blessedness is not only limited nowadays to uh, just God bless you. Oh, you are doing wonderfully well. Oh, good reputation. No. The blessedness, we can make it to include money. Money. So, um, I also know conflict managers who specialize in family mediation. Families that are going to divorce or that has even gone through or they are about to go through, they say you can make your separation or first of all, we can, we can prevent, we can help you through mediation. And they have saved many families. But for families who have gone beyond redemption stage and they insist on breaking up, they can still help them to make their divorce not bitter. Not bitter divorce. And they don't do, the, the conflict managers that do these things, they don't do it because of God as it were. They do it as career. Just like some lawyers we focus, we specialize on, let's say, business law, family law, property law. In, in conflict management, we can specialize. We can specialize, but um, for, for conflict managers many times, these skills, the skills, the basic skills of uh, man and conflict management can be taken from one specialization to the other. All you need to do sometimes is to offer one or two specialization courses in the area you are going. For instance, there, there's what we call family mediation. Um, there's what we call uh, oil, oil and gas dispute resolution whereby you focus on managing conflicts in the oil and gas sector, in the oil and gas sector. Communal conflict is another area. That one is a highly specialized area. Uh, communal conflict, you see, communal conflict is everywhere, everywhere, all over, all over Nigeria. And like the case I cited earlier, there are cases that are more than a century. And people are looking for, let me say, people won't mind if they see individuals that can help them. It could be conflict between a community and another community, between a section of the community and another section, between uh, a, an oil company, and a community, and so on and so forth. Many times, courts, the court system, litigation does not uh, address the issues in those types of conflicts. We have cases of land disputes or boundary disputes where, where, where uh, the Supreme Court has given its judgment decades ago, yet, 
the conflict still persists. Everybody is tired, yet the conflict still persists. Here are places where the skills, the expertise of conflict managers are needed. These are places where conflict managers are needed. However, many people are yet to know about professional conflict managers. Many people are yet to know. Many places where they are needed are yet to know about them. So the implication of that Excuse me, I have to pick uh, Ambassador Shelby Mugunya. Maybe it's, he needs to quickly give. Okay. Just give me a minute, please. Hello? Hello. Uh, I want to inform them. Hello, everyone. Yes, please. Um, Ambassador Shelby Mugunya is here. But okay. the location where he is, uh, he has terrible network problem. So I want to speak to Ross through my phone. Okay. Um, so I'm putting him on now. I'm trying to put my stuff on uh, by the speaker of the mic uh, of the of the system, so that we will be able to hear him. Okay. So. Okay. Sir, you can go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Are we all hearing, Ambassador Ogunyawo? Yes, I'm hearing. Hey, if the volume can come up more, that will be fine. That's very important. But I think very quickly, but the topic about Career work, career opportunity. Yes. yes, sir. Okay. It falls off. All your eggs will be destroyed. 
has learned over the years that sometimes it's better to specialize. You know, in a particular field, put on your head to one basket, take that basket, feed lost into the marketplace, and get full value for the win. You see the thing here, I will invite the teacher to come and be an agitator. We said that we see the Yes. I told myself, let me focus on meditation. Incidentally, I don't drink. I've focused on meditation for about 24 years now. What the result? We invited by the Central High Court Indian Center to submit a CD. After I submitted the CD, we got letters to come and collect our letters, our perfect letters to become members of the panel of this one. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the office, I think I'm going to collect my letter. I'll collect the letter on the condition that my name appears among the first ten. The attention is, eh, are you sure? I have to sit there and put my ID comment. Now we're looking for the first part of the fight. We're looking at the screen. It is there. Because I've put on my head to the basket of the digital that I know by sensing by listening, by listening to the part of it. I put the world that I've made to work with. Not everybody can. What am I good at? In this field of profit management, there's somebody who likes to pass knowledge. It has the time to be in academia. I think the rest of you, Professor Simola King, has been doing. We need to assure that you can impart knowledge to your people and help to multiply yourself. The other advantage of getting a job is that you are sure. Of the most recent life. If for you have a potential of being experienced, please be in that field. Give your best. These people are in Jimmy and try to get to the office by 7 seconds. If they are closing at 4 or 5 p.m., at five thirty, go to your boss and ask your boss, sir, madam, is there any other thing I can do? Is there any way I can do that? 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 When time comes for downsizing, you'll be sure that you'll not be downsizing. I'll do that again. Some of us may feel comfortable being in big employment. If you love to impact knowledge, you can become a lecturer. I think bad now. Whether you're a lecturer or anywhere else where you see a monthly thing, do not be like others. More salary earners. They are not committed to their jobs. I put them in the media at about quarter to four. Quarter to four. The only one they are going to my mind is the food of food. Put it out of the house at quarter to four. Who has the five four nights? Mm -hmm. are not committed to their work. What is the best to specialize? Think of where your knowledge will be best suited. Where you feel motivated and satisfied. And when you are going to work, you are happy. So whether you are there or not, any opportunity you have, make the best of it. Go to work earlier than most people. When they are all rushing home, go to your board and ask, Madam. Is there any other thing I can do to accept the limit? Then they know that I have committed to the job. 
So let's talk about the digital industrialization. We have different areas of conflict management that we think we need, that even if we need to have different areas of equity. Once you sit down and say, where can my capacity be best utilized? Where can I give value? In line and decide. Of course, that method that has come down. The last government that program, you want to see international NPO, Please keep your and utilize. Think about the business. Like students in this field, you can look at any organization. I don't know if I mentioned it because I expect people to go But I expect it. Check the annual report. Check their sport analysis. Focus on their weaknesses and search. Think of ways and means of filling up that gap. And then ensure that the decision maker has access. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, by show of hand, uh, please, if you have questions uh, from Ambassador Ogunyo, please raise up your hands, please. But let me uh, ask first, did we all hear him very clearly? Hello? No, I heard him. Oh. I didn't hear him clearly. I didn't I did not hear him clearly. Okay. Um did you pick one or two things for those of us who did not hear him clearly? Uh, not really. I just had some people I don't know. I, I did not even pick anything close. Don't take their job seriously or something. That's the only thing I heard. Uh, yeah, All true. I only had put your egg in one basket and then some people don't take their job seriously. Okay. Those are the statements I was able to pick. Okay, thank you. Uh, in fact, that, that is the gist. Let me um, summarize uh, things you have said. Let, let me... Okay. I'm also going home. Yes, sir. Some of our fans didn't hear you clearly, so I want to summarize to them, and then I can call back. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Let's say five minutes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. What? Uh, can we hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. Part of what is said is that 
not all of us that we have, we have had recently that uh, people say multiple sources of income and so on and so forth. Uh, and that there's the adage that we should not put all our eggs in one basket, but that majority of us, more than 90% of us, we cannot multitask. So if you find yourself that you cannot do more than one thing very well at a time, you should put all your eggs in one basket. That he has focused strictly on mediation in the last 24 or 27 years. And uh, recently, I mean, it's been known everywhere. And recently, when the, is it, is it, is it the Supreme Court, uh, maybe they, they are putting together a group of neutrals, a group of individuals who can serve in their ADR center, he was invited, he was part of them. And I said, he just mentioned to the coordinator of the program, the justice, that he wished that his name would be among the first 10 that is listed. And by the time they gave them their letters, his name was actually among the first 10. And he said, really, he wasn't surprised that because he has focused on mediation, and that is why he's now known in that area and the request for services all over. That the area of peace building, I mean, uh, career paths in this area of conflict peace is, um, you have the area of peace building, we have alternative dispute resolution, under which we have mediation, negotiation, and so on and so forth. That if you know that you cannot combine specializations, focus on one, one that you feel you are so much passionate about, and then develop your capacity in that area. Learn as much as you can in that area, and then make sure you deploy your service in that part and do more that is expected of you that if you find out that you are good in sharing knowledge, you can opt to become a lecturer. And in addition to that, you can even be a trainer. We have conflict managers who only do training. Training. They only do training because they know they are passionate about impacting people uh, with knowledge. And uh, if yours is not in the area of education, even if you are in a paid uh, job, you should do more than is expected of you. That you are seeing that majority of people, salary earners, government workers, they don't deliver as much as is required of them. But whether in paid employment or self-employed, if you do more than what is expected in this area, in this career, in conflict, conflict management, you will be able to uh, make impact and be successful. Um, so that's about the gist of what he has said. And he said that since it's an interactive uh, session, uh, you may begin to ask him questions on areas we are in need clarification. Did we get that? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. yes, sir. Okay. So, does anybody have any idea on how how we can make this thing work? I'd like you to hear him directly. Um, we are he, okay. First of all, I apologize that we are he is. He has been trying to connect since two p.m. He has used all his three phones, but the network of that area is terrible. That is why he opted for. Uh, call it in. So, does anybody know any way he can call directly? I mean, or we can make his voice heard more uh, better than what it is. Hello. Can he send a voice note to you? Then you play a okay. voice note or something. Okay. Then you play it. Okay, so that's another one. And uh, does anybody have any question 
in this path, in this, I mean, in this career path thing that we want to send to him too. Uh, um, I will, I will do that now. Hello? Madam Nora? Yes, sir. Okay, I thought you want to say something. Uh, yes, I want an advice okay. to a novice. Mm. After the training, how do I start? How do I showcase myself that I have skilled in this area? Okay. Do I just walk up to people or when there is a conflict, I make my research, do everything before I tender my proposal or I just walk up to so what? What do I do as okay. a beginner, as, as a novice? Okay. Uh, I am. I, okay, excuse me, please. Hello, sir. Um, we are suggesting that maybe you make a voice note, maybe on WhatsApp, and then I play to them. Well, somebody just asked a question now that as a beginner, as a beginner in conflict management, how does he make, how does she make her services uh, available or known to people? How does she make people to know that I now have these skills and, and that? So if you can do that sign in voice notes, uh, they will be able to hear better. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We are going to go to the office and ask the same question. I ask that to do that small analysis for this point to the national organization, check their interests and first do the part work that benefits them. And the right to the national has done work in this particular area. She wants to volunteer at Tavitu. But if you are saying I want to work, you don't need to pay me. It was a long time I told her I would support her. Let her write to different organizations. She said, I want to be directed to you and great to be your hands. This simple principle I mentioned earlier, I shared with that too. It's the staff who are being paid regularly and giving. By eight eight thirty, be sure that it's your tree before they do. If they are closing by four four thirty, by five a.m., go to your family and ask, sir, madam, is there anything you want you to do for me? Because of the time she was asking on their own, they started contributing money to support her. Mm. And then when there was an opportunity, we were even looking at opportunity for her. It was from that, if I say to that people were giving her link. And from there, she got into the Danish Refugee Council. From there, she had moved into the Danish Lab. She went to Mexico. Mm. People are pushing her. <laughs> it's simple principle to work. Let's not take it for granted. Mm. How else do people know you except you are willing to offer your services without pay? They are reluctant to pay, but they'll be glad to know you the ask back to have you in the system. So please volunteer your services, but let it be short. I want to have the system, let the video do that in the system. Because comment earlier than most people. Close later than all of them. And before you close, go and ask your immediate thought. Is there anything we want you to do for you? The second, which I did, was because I am a title of training, I look for training needs of organizations. I will write to them, I will go to run the hotel, I will run the hotel in Africa, get their performer invoices. First organizations are saying, look, we are working with this group. Hmm. If the members of this group have magicians 
see if you help their work, if you help them, they count as good team players. They should be trained and enhanced productivity. Pay for venue, pay for news. I will come and train them without charge. Most times they are stuck. Most times they will believe that they are even charged. I think I mentioned this uh, mm -hmm. two days ago. Mm -hmm. One thing is that they will defend you and they are both legal. So naturally, they get to come to you. And when they suspect that you cannot work without pay, most times they will send an officer to come to be part of the program. And this day, to observe and report that you will not ask the participant of money in any form. When you are done, a day or two, depending on how much you want to share, if you are there, and that's my claim, I got to say far more than what I would have done for, because they will tell themselves, this package cannot be free. And then they will make it possible for you to no other training program, even recommend it to other organizations. But the thing I realized that I needed the truth because the jobs were coming from different sites. So remember, I started by volunteering, by Sajo. Volunteering thing is one area that I want to recommend to volunteer your staff. If you don't volunteer, do research along the areas of need of the organization. I let them know if that area if you want to call me to ask back. So this is the thing. Just go to ask back. They are committed to this thing. I have this opportunity to ask back. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Uh, and not for now. Uh, uh can I call you back, sir? Sir? Uh, I will ask them. If they didn't, I will repeat. <laughs> I will repeat. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate that. So we will share that on WhatsApp with them. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Have a if there's any question, I will call you back, sir. Mm. Thank you, sir. Me too. I appreciate it too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madam Nora, did you get that? I had volunteering. Okay. Thank you. Let me summarize what he said. Um, the first thing is that we need to volunteer our services to relevant organization. Like he told us, on the first day, he said, research about the particular organization uh, you want to, you are interested in. He now told us the story of a, of a lady that came to our office with the same question. And the advice she gave her is, write to international organizations, since you are interested in working with them, tell them how you can add value to them. She said the lady was reluctant at first, but he supported her, and then the letters were written, and she sent to many of them. That later, she got, she told them, I want to come and volunteer, don't pay me anything. But in addition to that, Ambassador Ogwen now told her that when you get there, arrive at your workplace, arrive at your workplace before the normal staff that are paid. And then, before you close, at the closing uh, time, go to your boss and ask, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can do for you? And he said, this lady followed that. And when people saw her dedication, the staff that are being paid, they started contributing money for her for transportation and all sorts. And the next time there was an opportunity for job in that organization, she was employed. And now that the lady has moved from one international organization to the other, because all those ones are just pushing up. 
has been to the best of them, International Arts, Oxfam, Mexico, and so on and so forth. So, um, he also gave his own experience too, when he was just starting. When he was just starting, how he, we identify organizations and then show them, write proposal on how he can train them in conflict management without pay. I think he shared that experience on uh, the first day. So, um, in addition to what he has said, um, I just finished this training. I want to let people know I have these skills. I want to put my certificates in a conspicuous place. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Maybe in my current place of work or anywhere or even in my house, in a conspicuous place, why? Because when people see it, they ask you questions about it. Because sometimes we have the tendency to under appreciate or not really appreciate the knowledge we have. But when people see this certificate in your office or wherever, and say, ah, you have done this thing. Do you, can you, does it mean that you can manage conflict? They will be constantly reminding us, you know, they will place demand on that skills for us. So we won't just get the certificate and go and put it somewhere. Now, another way, another thing we should do to get our skills out there is to do pro bono services. You know, voluntarily, you want to go and volunteer in an organization, but pro bono services, just like any lawyer, any green home lawyer will do. First, you want to attach yourself to places where you can build your skills. Mentors, whether as an organization, uh, organization that are into conflict management, or individuals who are into conflict management, so that you, you, um, gather needed experience. But while you do that, it's not a bad idea, bad idea if you offer your skills pro bono. Look out for opportunities where you can put this new knowledge, these new skills to use within the family, at your workplace, in your religious organization. Many churches and mosques, we just assume that the religious leaders, they will know how to uh, handle conflict. Conflict among the members of the church, conflict uh, between the church and another, and so on and so forth. You can offer your service in such a place. Go to the head of the church. I can do this. Can we set up a committee on managing conflict management among church members? Because when there's conflict between husband and wife, people just take it to, to the pastor. And the pastor may not have the necessary skills to do that. I've organized trainings like this for church leaders. Bishops attended, general overseers attended, choir masters, choir mistresses, and their comments show that these kind of skills, I mean, they are lacking. Many of them at that level, we think they know everything about managing conflict, but they came out to say, we really need this. I wish this thing was part of our curriculum in theology school, and so on and so forth. In your neighborhood, I mean, you may offer your service to tenants, I mean, uh, landlord association or resident association. Resident association there. You may offer your service, let them just know. When they need it, they may remember, ah, somebody came and told us she can do this. Okay, there's conflict between this person and this person. Let us give it to her. 
So, you know, I was saying the other time that many people don't yet know that there are professional conflict managers. So, at this stage, we still need to push ourselves out. From my personal experience, when you let people know, when you offer your services to people like that, they readily take it. When I started, excuse me, when I started with the community, I mean, communal conflict, the first case I, I, I doubled in, I just saw it on the TV that these two communities are fighting. There have been killings, destruction of uh, properties. So I just wrote to them. I got the contact of some people at both sides. And then, in fact, what I first sent was WhatsApp message and text message. The same message in WhatsApp, I sent it through text. One of it to justice. Are you with me, ma'am? Yes, I'm um, with you. Okay. I was shocked at how quick the two people responded. Give me the box inside the room. They said, yes, Prof, we need this. Please, we'll be happy. Then I, I, I set up a physical meeting with them, and then the rest is history. And by the time they know that you did it here, they begin to refer you to other places. And we learned that you are the one that did this. Can you please? So, there is a large room for us to uh, put our new knowledge to use. Do pro bono services, volunteer for organizations, build your capacity and your expertise by uh, attaching yourself to a mentor or someone that can just you know, show you the ropes. Some of them, you do it virtually so that when they have cases, they can call you, say, okay, come, I want to be part of this thing, maybe as an observer. All these things will go into your profile. One day you will wake up and you look at your profile and you say, oh, I've been involved in organizing this, 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 this. What like this? I've been involved in mediating this, this, this cases of conflict. Okay, another thing is this. Uh, many states across Nigeria now has what you call multi-door courthouse. Multi-door courthouse. This is a uh, ADR place attached to the court such that justice can assign cases. When they look at certain cases, they assign it to multi-door courts. So, once you do your training in mediation, mediation training, you can go to such places and offer your service. Tell them I'm a mediator. But only that this, our basic course, does not cover mediation. Now, there are citizens, um, what do we call it? Citizens um, Mediation Center, established by government. This is another place where we can go, oh, I'm trained in this, I want to come and offer my services. Then they can ask you, I mean, tell you to first of all observe for some weeks before they begin to assign cases to you. And then you build your profile and then it gets to a stage you can easily monetize these skills. Is that satisfactory, man? Very, very. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. Man. So, you see, all the opportunities are around us. The most important thing is put them to use immediately. Thank you. Okay, I can see your aunt. Uh, Madam Madeda, I wrote me. Yes, sir. Um, my, my own uh, question is concerning... Um, um someone who is like uh, starting late though that word late is relative 
Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if, for instance, somebody who is not a uh, into any line of conflict, this thing, not in research, not a legal person, not a lecturer, and you are just in a uh, career path that is totally different from this, how do you bring yourself to uh, get into uh, this line? Mm-hmm. You see, Thank you very much, Ma, for that question. Most of what I've said applies to people in that category. Yes, somebody starting late, probably age. Age in conflict management school, in fact, is a plus, is an advantage. People tend to trust older people with cases based on the assumption that they have experience. So age is not a barrier here. In fact, sometimes the older, the better. The older, the better. Now, you have done the right thing by taking a foundation course like this. The next thing is courses in mediation. There's a course on mediation that you can also take. That one certifies you and tells you, takes you through the nitty gritty of mediating. With that, you can enter any formal place. You can enter any formal place. You see, um, with a certificate course like this, you may go on your own, offer pro bono services here and there, attach yourself to a mentor, uh, and so on. But to get into places like government multi door court house, uh, houses around, they will need you to be um, trained in mediation. They need you to be trained in mediation. Um, so, however, Without training in mediation, this training you have, you can use it in your church, in your neighborhood, and so on and so forth. So the, the case is not too different from people who are either in research or whatever. Now, it's not being a lecturer does not give you the competence to teach. It's not every lecturer. I mean, it's not all the lecturers in peace and conflicts that specialize in conflict management. Conflict management or conflict resolution, as we call it there, is about uh, a, a small part of peace building, of peace studies. So that you're not a lecturer, a researcher or whatever, is not a disadvantage at all. In fact, it could be an advantage in the sense that you don't have uh, something competing with pure conflict management career. Have faith in your competencies, the skills you have acquired in a course like this, start using them in the most informal setting and then gradually move to formal setting. Move to formal setting. So uh, does that uh, satisfy you, man? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do we have any other question? Ambassador Vera, who called the other time, I mean, a few minutes ago when I was answering, so I want to call him back to see whether he has some other things for us. So you see, the whole thing is about build your capacity make your services available uh, as soon as possible at any level and then the rest will become history. A minute, please. Hello, sir. Okay. Okay. Please, can you hear Ambassador Ogino? Yeah, let's him go ahead. Okay, he said you should go ahead. Okay, sir. The program is a case that has so successful as they are investing the client. 
Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. Let me, uh, for those of us who didn't hear what he said, he said something happened today, and he want to use it to buttress a point. And the point is that anybody that wants to succeed in uh, careers in uh, conflict management should note this, that you should be solution provider. You should be um, predictable. Uh, people, you should be predictably dependable. And I gave the short story uh, that um, he was supposed to come to talk to us by 2.30 p.m. today. But by 2 p.m., he has been trying to connect. And by 2.25, when he saw that he couldn't connect, he loaded his, credit, his, his phone so that he may be able to speak directly to us. That he could have given excuse. I mean, and the excuse would have been legitimate that, oh, network issue. But because he has always made up his mind that he will not give excuse for something he has been committed to. That was why he did everything and as possible to reach out to us. And that he found out that that is a useful thing for anybody that want to that want to be successful in conflict management. Um, is that clear to us, please? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Great. Great. Meaning that even when yes, we are sir. offering, thank you, man and sir. Even when we are offering our service free of charge, pro bono. Let us be committed and let us be willing to do everything it takes to, uh, to deliver that service. When you begin to take your services and your skills around, at the beginning, everything is at your expense. I, I know when I've driven to... I still did something like that last week in one case of communal conflict. I will file my car and drive to another state to go and talk to communities. And this thing is free. I mean, when we bring them together, I'm not charging them for it. But I will file my car, I remember when the fuel, before the 500 or 800, uh, 600 naira fuel hike, the hike, I mean, this, I mean, there was time it was about 200, close to from 165. You still go. When it is 500 and something, you still fuel your car and you go. Because, I mean, you are committed to conflict management. But the time is coming that uh, big people will be sending for you. Uh, sometime, maybe two or three years ago, the United Nations sent a chopper to pick Ambassador Ogunyowu. I think I still have the picture. UN helicopter to take him to the northeast from Abuja and bring him back. I think that that time maybe there was no flight zone or something like that, but they needed him. They sent chopper to pick him, come and talk to these people, these communities about mediation. 
So at the beginning, we will have to uh, sow, but later we will reap. Let's just be committed to managing conflict. For some of us, the time we will reap will be far. For some people, it will be almost immediately. But the most important thing is, we are wherever we are at present. If we look around us very well, there are conflicts begging to be managed. There are conflicts begging to be managed. Look around you. You will see a lot of them. Thank you very much. Does anybody have uh, any thoughts to share or any question? We are moving towards... Thank you, Prof. Thank you too, sir. Uh, it's been really interesting. Uh, my question is uh, still bordering on the connectivity um, of people who are willing to actually give me the services, whether on pro bono or anyhow, but who are interested to really make a career. Actually, my background is um, I'm an HR professional, and uh, because of my managing people and involved in training, that's how I became interested in peace and conflict resolution. So it does appear that uh, I have interest in talking to people and uh, solving problems. But I know that uh, in every field, there are those who have been there already and uh, who will showcase the younger ones, when I mean younger ones, the upcoming professionals in that field. So in what way will you people who have become uh, known, who have also done this for several years, you know, uh, bring us up so that we can also have a, a test of the practice, either in training mostly, and maybe if you can train most times, you, you can also talk to people with about uh, communication. So how would the mentorship come up? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. All over Nigeria, we have established conflict managers in different areas of conflict management, especially mediation, mediation. Uh, so uh, I know people who have offices, private firm in Abuja. Ambassador Gwe is one of them. One can volunteer his services with such people. Uh, nowadays, virtual virtual platform have even made volunteering in such easier. For instance, my admin is not on ground. Our admin that facilitated that is Jemima that facilitated. I mean the groupings. I mean she's doing she's she's doing everything. Virtually, the coordination, the this and that. So there's opportunity for physical uh, volunteering, uh, mentorship. You know, mentorship is even more active when you identify an individual and say, "Okay, I want you to train me or uh, help me build my experience in this area." What those mentors will do is once they have opportunity okay there is a training opportunity you have said i want to be a facilitator i want to know how to train they will tell you okay these are the courses you need to do for instance most organizations will want you to do training of trainers before they can allow you to train with them and they can just show you uh the ropes do this do this some of the things mentors learn through uh, trial and error, 
they will give to their mentees free of charge. Free of charge. I know an organization I've been trying to work with them, maybe 2000 and I started engaging them for 2008. Now, I, I recommend people uh, there for various things, including job. At least I have one of my past students who was admitted based on my recommendations of that place. I've enjoyed about 15 years of relationship with that organization, with that organization. So if I have students going for CWS, I just say, oh, I call. So that is how mentorship thing work. They have opportunities that are no longer useful to them directly or personally, but which they can make available. And it doesn't have to be physical. Just, oh, Mr. Emmanuel, you are in Porta course. There is a program coming up organized by this, this, this person. Tell him you are from me. I've already told you is there. I mean, it's part of it. But if you have an opportunity, oh, I want to do physical. I want to be reporting in their office. I know by the time we look around, we will know, I will know someone that knows someone, one of our contacts who has a conflict uh, management firm around that place. I know someone in, in Asaba now. Is a very close contact. But no, no name has come to mind readily around Porter Court. But I think there must be multi door court house in Porter Court. So if you are interested in, I want to be a mediator, that's okay. Go to this place, meet this person. They will take you to the multi door court house. And then that's it, is it? So it's all about what I've been saying. There's there's no big deal about it sincerely. There is not ma there's no magic to it. Sometimes once we know your interests, once the people out there know what you're interested in and they have you on their database in mind, if they have an opportunity that they think you can take advantage of, they just let you know. And before what you know what is happening, you can also fly on your own. But don't you ever underestimate the skills you have at this level. Put them to use. Not everybody will need a mentor or somebody to pull their hands uh, for them to make their break. For them to make their break. Maybe I should add this. Supposing you have around you a conflict situation that you feel, oh, my expertise is not good enough to manage this thing. Or a training opportunity that you can facilitate, that you can make happen. I feel, oh, my expertise cannot do this thing. Reach out to those you feel, oh, this man or uh, this woman, I think they have. Talk to them. Oh, there's a communal conflict in my area. Please, can you come? And automatically, you'll be part of the team that will do it. That will, that will do that thing. Even the minimum, in the minimum, is for you to, to participate as an observer. As an observer. I, I started training formally uh, in 23 years ago. 23 years ago. But when I wanted to start mediation training, I still did hand holding with Ambassador Guyovo. I organized training in my school, and then he will come and facilitate, and he will give me, okay, you two, do one module, do this. And when I did it, I said, oh, you are doing well. You know, my experience as a teacher and other training I've been doing since 2000, year 2000. And before you knew what was happening, it said you can now do it all alone. I said, really? Like, go ahead. So there's no hard and fast road to it. There are so many, I mean, the way to, 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 to break out or to go on your home or to offer your services in this area, they, they are so flexible, so flexible. So 
I hope I answered your question, Mr. Emmanuel. Very well, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have any other? Uh, okay. Um, if anybody still has, you may ask. But I want us to now move towards wrapping up, uh, wrapping up uh, this uh, session and the whole workshop. Um, I want to repeat what I said in the morning for the benefit of people who are not there then. Uh, we appreciate our passion to build our capacity in conflict management. I tell you, we cannot have enough professionals in this area. We cannot have enough. And the world is still short of hands in the area of conflict management. We need people to come on board. Okay, but be that as it may, we notice that some of us, uh, maybe due to schedule of our work or network, we could not participate in the course as effectively as we wanted to. We sign in, we are thrown out, and so on and so forth. So what we have decided to do is to make all the sessions available online, either through YouTube or through uh, Google Drive, and then we give you the links, the link to module one and other sessions we have. You watch the modules at your uh, convenience, answer some uh, questions, quizzes, you know, multi-choice or whatever, small, small questions to really test your knowledge and then once you are done and we see your score, then we can issue certificates for those who want. And but the most important thing is that you yourself, you can fill in the gaps that you have in, I mean, when you couldn't participate very well, the gaps in your knowledge through that. The most important thing for us is for you to be able to beat your chest that I have gone through modules one, to seven or eight, and I have listened to the interactive session, experience sharing, I can beat my chest that I know all there is to know about this FCCM, and I can deploy my skills. That is most important for us. Now, we are yet to decide the amount of time we are going to give you to do that. We don't want to leave it uh, open endlessly. We may do it a week, you can say a week from the day we launch that thing, which we hope will not be too long, maybe next week. And say between so so day and so so day, go and engage and then do the necessary thing and then you are good to go. So we let you know that. Now, after the end of the training today, we're going to watch. Uh, look at our screenshots of participants and also videos. We are going to compile the list of people we feel uh, participated well enough uh, in the course, and then we group all all of you for the group activity. The post work uh, the post workshop activity you have one week to submit. To submit it, I mean, that is maybe uh, group three, I mean, activity three and activity five, they're about the activities that come, I mean, bring the group together. Uh, but you can submit your individual assignments starting from today. So, um, the reason, part of the reason why we thought we would make the videos available to us is we we had 108 people who registered for this course and who had expectations. So if only 33 now showed up first day, 20 something second and third day, 
then the other people probably have been incapacitated. We also thought that by providing the videos, those people also, the remaining 70 something percent also will be able to take advantage of it. So if you have any colleague, any friend that referred to this course, that wasn't able to participate due, due to one thing or the other, please tell them. We are going to also send emails to all of the people on our database. But you know, some people don't check their emails. So you may want to just mute it to them. Oh, we can do this. Once we share the links with you, then share it with them. And then uh, we have more conflict managers, more competent conflict managers. So I think that is that. Uh, that is all from our end. Um, I don't know whether any one of us has anything to say or, I mean, as we, as we wrap up, as we wrap up. Uh, okay, um, while we are still waiting for that, let me say that, you see, Emsman Consult has other courses, other courses that we do, uh, they are not free, they are not free, um, we'll be sharing them with us on the platform after this course, um, if you are interested, generally our courses are priced lower, than what is obtainable uh, outside. And we do that for a purpose, and the purpose is that so that many more people, many more people will be able to afford, be able to afford um, conflict management skills. And uh, they be able to build careers in, in that area. So we have courses on uh, um, mediation, we have courses on communal conflicts, uh, courses on religious uh, conflicts, transforming communal conflicts, uh, workplace, oil and gas, uh, dispute resolution, uh, and family disputes to family mediation rather, uh, and a few other ones, and a few other ones. So we will share our course brochure with us with time. So if you're interested, you can always reach out to us. And also we have relationship with other training institutes, with other training institutes and agencies, agencies uh, within Nigeria and maybe one or two outside Nigeria. So I want to congratulate us for taking the pains to be here. This is Saturday. People are supposed to be going for Owambe and uh, resting. I was hoping, I mean, I was thinking, oh, people will not show up, although I've been here since eight. So okay, let's see how many people will show up. But I was impressed when I saw 13, 15, 17, 18 at times. I mean, I think a little over 20 at times before we started dropping again. But we welcome you to the world of conflict management to the world of successful career conflict managers. Thank you very much for choosing to learn from Hemsman's uh, consultants. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate your effort and time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your effort. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. God bless you, sir. Amen, Lord. Thank you, too. Thank you very much for, for this excellent uh, training. Uh, sincerely, I really enjoy the sessions. And I appreciate, and I believe others too appreciate your teaching style which has made this uh, uh, the training enjoyable and very easy to follow, you know, mm -hmm. including all these uh, live, real-life uh, uh, examples 
to illustrate the concept discussed. It, sincerely, it is uh, very, very interesting. And now I think I have learned a lot and I know that it will positively impact my ability to manage conflicts, both personal and prof in professional settings. Please just know that uh, all your efforts are greatly appreciated. And I know I'm also speaking the minds of other members. Oh. Thank you very, very much. Thank you Thank very you, much, sir. Ma, for your kind words. Okay, now I want to say bye-bye to everybody. It's nice meeting us. We continue our nice interaction on WhatsApp. Uh, see, we wrap up the old, uh, the old uh, activities. Thank you, Favor. I can see your hand clapping. Thank you so much. Thank Do you, sir. Thank you. Raku, thank you too. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank, hey, yeah. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> Conflict is something that happens every day in our life and around us. But this is a good knowledge. It's, it will help us see how we can work on to help us solve so many of them. Oh. It's really a great knowledge for most of us. In Thank fact, you. I would like to even share with people who did not join this group to see how they can learn, or maybe in the future, also do the FCCM course. Thank, Thank you, you so really. much, sir. Truly and greatly appreciated. Oh, thank you. Oh, I think as many of us that can turn on our videos, I really appreciate it. Look, I, I am just seeing Mr. Emmanuel. Wow, nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Wow, wow, this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We'll, we'll keep the flag flying. Thank you, and, sir. Uh, we appreciate everything you've done, the sacrifices and uh, your presentation very much. i appreciate you thank you very much thank you very much sir. to my fellow participants uh, who are also in duty now who, who this is the beginning of another connectivity so we can always interact thank, thank you, you very much mr emmanuel Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Good to see you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Madam Enyojo and uh, Joy, let's see your face. Favor, Madam Tony, can we see your faces as we wrap up, please? Just turn the videos on for a few minutes or seconds. So that when we see, when we are passing beside you on the street, we're able to like, oh, so this is... Oh, thank you, Madam Ayn. Thank you for that. Okay, that's lovely. Joy, Madam Adedairo. Okay, okay. Ah. Uh, oh, Madam Toy, JJ. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wow. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Joe. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, this is your face. Yes. I think Thank you. This is my face. Uh, yes. We're all done. Yes. Thank you. It's been a long time. Very long time. 23 years ago. 20. <laughs> Thank We're you. All so done. Much. Yes. Madam, I did I could see your face too. Great. Great. Thank you, everybody. We meet sometime again. God bless us in all our endeavors. Bye. Um, bye. God bless you too. Bye. Yeah. Bye, madam. <laughs>